What do you do if your asthma isn't improving with your inhaler? Well, I'm not a medical professional. I got a disclaimer on the screen right here and a disclaimer in the description of this video. But what I can say is what I do and what I've done my entire life as an athlete with asthma who has had asthma since birth. I've used my inhaler through the years. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. And today I'm gonna to go through the five steps that I've implemented over the years to get stronger lungs and to really maintain my physical output even though I have asthma. I'm gonna go through it, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> but first, I have a free guide for you. It is my healthy living guide. My three pillars of healthy living, you can check it out. It's gonna take you less than three minutes. Three pillars in less than three minutes, you can start integrating them into your life today. They help me lose 30 pounds in 90 days. And more importantly, the three pillars have helped me keep the weight off, just live a healthier and happier lifestyle overall. So grab that guide, it's linked right below this video, absolutely free. So my experience with inhalers and asthma is inhalers don't necessarily cure asthma, okay? Remember, talk to your healthcare professional, inhalers are gonna really affect different people differently, okay? For me, my inhaler has never been able to cure my asthma. I just wanna get that out there. My inhaler has been able to help me when I have asthma attacks. It's been able to help me when I'm sick to be able to breathe better, but it has not cured my asthma. And over the years, I have been told by much smarter people than me on this subject that the goal of the inhaler isn't even to cure your asthma. It's to treat the symptom, the symptoms of asthma, okay? That's one thing, I just wanna get out there. It's not supposed to cure asthma, it's supposed to help you with your asthma. So what did this mean for me growing up? Well, I had some professionals that told me, hey, you should take your inhaler before you do any sort of workout, exercise, whatever. I played soccer growing up. So for a while, I would not only take my inhaler to every practice and every game that I had, I would literally take it before every practice and every game. I would take it before I had any symptoms. I would take it before my asthma even went into play, right? I took it before I would start wheezing. I, I just took it to take it. And it made sense to me. I'm like, okay, you don't have asthma. I'm gonna take the inhaler. And guess what? I would take it and I felt amazing, okay? I felt on top of the world. I would go in and play, could breathe amazingly, felt great. What I found though, is the more that I did that, the more that I took my inhaler before I had any symptoms of an asthma attack or asthma, or just asthma hitting me, I took it more. I became dependent on it. I took it more and more and more. So I saw different specialists and they said, Johnny, maybe you should try taking your inhaler less. Now you don't wanna just all of a sudden stop taking it, but try doing a practice where you don't take it before you start playing. See what happens. And then when you start feeling your asthma symptoms come on, of course, take it. Make sure you have it with you, but don't take it at first. Let's see what happens. I'm like, okay, so I go to practice, kicking the ball around, and I'm like, huh, this is a little harder, right? This is a little harder because I didn't take it at the beginning of practice. But then I found, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try it. And, you know, I ended up taking it about halfway through practice. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I kept doing that. And what I found is it got easier and easier to not have to rely on my inhaler. And I eventually got to the point where I didn't even need to take it throughout practice. I was like, huh, this is super interesting. Well, 
So what I learned for me is that asthma has affected me similar to different injuries. In high school, I tore my patella tendon in my left knee, okay? And I was told, hey, you need to get surgery. You're probably never gonna play soccer again. Talk to another professional. And they're like, no, you're just, you can do six months of really intensive physical therapy and then we'll assess if you need surgery. I'm like, okay, great, let's do it. That's what I did. Well, when I was doing my physical therapy over those six months, I was wearing a knee brace. Well, what I found as I was getting deeper and deeper into physical therapy is that my knee brace started to become a literal crutch for me. It was not allowing my knee to get better. Now I needed it throughout this process and I needed it all the time throughout this process, at least the beginning to promote healing. But in order, if I ever wanted to actually go and play soccer again without wearing a knee brace, what did I have to do? I had to wear the knee brace less and less. I couldn't just use it as a crutch. Same thing happened to me a little later in life. I started doing 14ers and my knees were acting up a bit. So what did I do? I started wearing a knee brace all the time, but then I realized I can't do this. I need to incrementally use my knee brace less. So I looked at this and I looked at my asthma and I was like, huh, an inhaler is like the knee brace. Very necessary, depending on how bad the asthma attack is or how bad my asthma is, just like the knee. If you tear your tendon in your knee, you probably need to wear a knee brace for a while. But if you do it forever, then you don't give your knee the ability to have to heal itself completely so that you can do things without the knee brace. Same thing with my asthma. Like I said, I'm talking from my experience. If I use my inhaler all the time, then my lungs aren't giving the opportunity to get stronger, to not have to rely on the inhaler. So here are my five steps that I took to improve my asthma without relying 100% on my inhaler, okay? Step one, and thank you for still being here in this video. I know there was a lot of backstory. Step one, always have your inhaler with you. Okay, you have asthma, you have asthma, bro? All right, you have asthma, okay? Always have your inhaler with you. Always have it with you. Same thing. Right now, I have a little bit of a knee issue going on in my right knee. Like I said, I tore a patella tendon in my left knee. Now I'm having some issues with my right knee. I have my knee brace with me all the time. I'm not wearing it, but I have it with me. If I need it, I put it on. But I don't keep it on because I don't want my knee to fully rely on the knee brace. Always have your inhaler with you. My inhaler's in the other room. It's with me all the time. To this day, it will be forever. I always have it with me. Because you never know when you have that asthma attack, you may actually need it. So that's step one. Step two, instead of using my inhaler as a preventative device, meaning instead of using it before a workout activity, I made sure to have it with me and I used it as a reactive, a reactive device. So I had it with me, had it super nearby, I actually had it in my pocket, so I could just take it out and use it. Instead of preventative, I use it reactive. So preventative versus reactive. Because here's the thing. Preventative is important, okay? Just in life, it is much better to be preventative than reactive. The problem is the inhaler was not built as a preventative device. It is a reactive device. So when you start using it for prevention, you're not giving 
yourself the ability to strengthen your lungs. And again, this is my experience. It's maybe completely different for you. Inhalers have had some changes over the years too. Okay, so this is just what I did. Okay, so that's step two. Use it reactively, not preventatively. And don't hear me wrong. If you go to that soccer practice and you're five minutes in, because you didn't use the inhaler at the beginning, and you start feeling your asthma come on, use your inhaler, okay? Use it. You don't have to suffer through it. It can be dangerous to suffer through it. I'm just saying that instead of using it before the asthmatic symptoms come on, use it in response, okay? Because what you're actually doing is you are allowing your lungs to build some prevention in themselves. And that brings me to number three. Only use your inhaler if you really need it. When you need it. Just because you feel like a superhuman when you take your inhaler before that practice, before that workout, doesn't mean that you needed it before that workout, okay? I know, you're probably like, well, I can run faster. I can lift more weight. I can run more miles. That's great, but you're literally running more miles using a drug. The drug is in your system, and it's allowing you to run those miles. So your lungs aren't actually having to do what they need to to strengthen so that you could do it without the inhaler, okay? Preventative versus reactive. If you feel your symptoms coming on and they become unbearable, you don't want them to become unbearable. That's why we have inhalers. You wanna do it before, you wanna to react to it before it gets unmanageable, okay? So only use it when you really need it. It may feel good to run five miles extremely quickly because you took your inhaler at the beginning before your run versus taking a two to three mile run without your inhaler. It may not feel as good, you're like, oh God, I only did three miles today. I'm gonna to take my inhaler more. You can grow from that three to five. Only way you're gonna do it though is if you don't use your inhaler in the first place. Make sure it's with you though. Number four, yet again, this is just me. Number four. When I was playing soccer and I went through this and I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna use my inhaler at the beginning. Every single practice, I tried to get farther into the practice without using my inhaler. This meant that I would have asthma symptoms start happening to me, okay? They would literally start happening. So I'd be running, I'd feel it coming on. And I'm like, okay, I'm wheezing. I'm starting to wheeze, okay. This is the beginning of what could turn into an asthma attack. But I told myself, I'm not gonna use it just yet, okay? You gotta be careful with this, and this is why like, Please run all this by your medical professional. This is just what I did, my experience, okay? Don't recommend doing this without talking to a medical professional. Disclaimer's right here. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and hold on for another minute. And that's what I did, okay? The other thing that I did is instead of using the inhaler reactively, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a break. So I'd be running, just did a sprint, asthma starts hitting me. Instead of taking the inhaler, I didn't keep running. I took a break and I breathed through it, okay? So, take a break and breathe. And breathe. Now if that doesn't work, take your inhaler. <laughs> Do it. But if you feel it coming on, Take a rest and breathe. Manage it yourself, because you're literally becoming your own inhaler. You're managing your asthma yourself, and that's empowering, and that's why I did it, and that's why I made it a goal of mine to like get farther and farther through soccer practice, get farther and farther through that run without using my inhaler. Number five, the less and less that I use my inhaler, the less and less I needed it. I'm gonna say that again. The less and less that I used my inhaler, the less and less I needed it. 
At the beginning of this video, I talked about the more and more I used my inhaler, the more and more I needed it, or the more and more I felt like I needed it because I felt superhuman. It literally makes you feel superhuman. You take the inhaler, you're like, oh, I can run a marathon. <laughs> like, that's how you feel. It's a drug. That's what it makes you feel like. And it's a drug that saves tons and tons of lives every year. It's an important one. The inhalers are super important for us. If you have asthma, your inhaler's super important. Your nebulizer's super important. I need those things, just like you. I just try to use them less and less, so I'm not depending on it. So, less equals less. More equals more. Try and manage it yourself. Make this the reactive. With the inhaler being the ultimate reactive if you really need it. Take care of yourself. I have three pillars of healthy living wrapped up in a guide. It's gonna take you less than three minutes to check out. It's linked right below this video. Help me lose 30 pounds in less than 90 days and maintain elite fitness as a professional athlete. Thank you for the likes and subscribes.